you already know what this is. This is Sony's next generation console, the PlayStation 5. Now in this video, we're gonna get to know the PS5. I'm talking the hardware with all the new stuff in it and the performance with 4K graphics and high frame rates, and just how powerful the PS5 can really get all the way to the software experience and all the new stuff that comes with it, to the new controller and all its features, and to just anything and everything that has to do with the experience of having the PS5 yourself in your own hands. Okay, ready to get started? Well, let's start with one of the most exciting things. What actually makes the PS5 a next generation console? Let's start with the hardware and all the new power it has and what it's capable of. When we take a look at the hardware powering the PS5, we see that it has an AMD CPU with 8 cores at 3.5 GHz, a custom RDNA 2 GPU, and if you look at the stats, it's pretty comparable to the RTX 2080. You might say that that's its PC equivalent. And it has 16 GB of GDDR6 RAM. It has an internal storage of 825 gigabytes on an SSD now, not a hard drive. And also that 825 gigabytes is actually 667 gigabytes of actual usable storage. And it's actually even less, uh, but we'll talk about that later. The PS5 should also cool much better now because the whole cooling system with the fans and everything has been reworked and it shouldn't be as loud as hell like the PS4 was. But we'll take a proper look at the fans on the PS5 later though. First, let's see how all these specs translate into actual gameplay. When it comes to how well games actually run, the PS5 is capable of running some games like Call of Duty here at 4K at 120 frames per second. Actually, Call of Duty Cold War runs at 4K 60 frames per second. If you want to put it into 120 frames per second mode, then it's going to go from 4K to dynamic 4K, which is actually more like 2K, and it can even drop below that. It's going to be shifting back and forth for the best performance. But still, 2K compared to 1080p from last gen, that's pretty good. You know, playing games at around 4K, even 2K actually, is just a good amount nicer compared to 1080p. But the 120 frames per second part is actually even better. You know, it's literally 100% extra smoothness compared to the max 60 frames per second you could do on current gen consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One. Well, maybe I should call them last gen now, right? But trust me, that's what's gonna catch your eye the most. If you've played at 120 frames per second before, like if you're a PC gamer or something, then I don't need to tell you how much nicer it is, you know? You already know. Now I can't really show you 120 frames per second here on YouTube, so if you haven't experienced it before, just take my word for it. It's literally double the smoothness you're probably used to. Now remember, I said the PS5 can play games at 4K 120 frames per second though. I didn't say it will play games at 4K 120 frames per second. Like sure, I can play Call of Duty at 4K 120, well, dynamic 4K 120. But if you're going to Spider-Man, for example, sure it does play it in 4K, like actual 4K this time. As you can see, it looks better and sharper than how things looked on Call of Duty. But with this game, it maxes out at 60 frames per second. And if you're going to Red Dead Redemption, for example, you see that it actually maxes out at 30 frames per second, just like the PS4 actually. And this time, it doesn't even run in 4K, it runs in 1080p HD, a lot less sharp than with the other games. Now, if you're looking for the sharpest of the sharpest and the best of the best graphics you can get on the PS5 though, well, at least for now, then you want to play a game with ray tracing. A game like Spider-Man, for instance. Now, I don't want to say too much. I just want you to see for yourself, okay? This is how things look with ray tracing on, and this is with ray tracing off, okay? Pay attention to the windows and reflections and stuff, because I find that's where the biggest difference is when it comes to ray tracing. Actually, no, I wouldn't really say that. The actual big difference between having ray tracing on or off is the frames per second, the frame rate. With ray tracing off, the game will run in 60 frames per second, and when you're moving around and web slinging, things will be smooth like this, and the game will look good, but it wouldn't look the absolute best it can, like it wouldn't be the most visually pleasing. But when you turn on ray tracing though, then visually speaking, everything will be better and look even more stunning. Like you can really notice it in the reflections in the game, like in the mirrors and the glass and everything. But the game won't be playing so smoothly though. It'll actually be playing about half as smooth as it does when ray tracing is off. That's 30 frames per second. And it's not so bad, but it's definitely not as nice. Like, it's noticeably worse. You should be able to see the difference in smoothness for yourself. So basically, yes, the PS5 can't handle gaming at 4K 120 frames per second, but it really depends on the game and how graphically intense it is. For now, you should know, even if you're playing a game that the PS5 can run at 4K 120 frames per second, it doesn't actually mean you'll experience your game at 4K 120 frames per second. Actually, I bet for most people, you're still gonna be stuck at 1080p 60 frames per second. Now, it's not the PS5's fault though, it's just that you're gonna need the actual equipment that can match the PS5. You're gonna need a 4K monitor or TV, and it has to also be able to run that 4K at 120 frames per second as well if you wanna get the full experience. A TV like that is gonna cost you about $1,000, maybe more. 
And a monitor like that is gonna cost you probably over a thousand dollars. Don't worry, I'll put links in the description to the cheapest compatible TV or monitor I can find. But you see, you actually have to keep all this stuff in mind if you wanna get the PS5 for all its graphical improvements. Cause you won't really be experiencing most of the graphical improvements if you don't have the right and capable equipment. All in all though, the PS5 is a very capable machine. You can play games like Call of Duty at 4K at up to 120 frames per second. Well, dynamic 4K at 120 frames per second. For a lot of other games that are more graphical, you're gonna have to choose between the highest quality 4K modes that use ray tracing and look real nice, but are also capped to 30 frames per second. It's either that or the 60 frames per second mode, which plays much smoother, like literally twice as smooth. And it'll still be 4K and you know, it looks pretty nice really. Like you can see for yourself right here. And this is actually the mode I prefer to play in just because I want the smoother gameplay, but myself and you as well, if you choose this mode, will be missing out on the beauty of ray tracing, which does give you the most visually pleasing graphics you can get on the PS5. The PS5 also though, can play older games with higher quality and higher frame rates. Like God of War for example, you can have it run in 4K on the PS5, and I think the PS4 Pro could actually do this as well, I'm not sure, but the PS5 version looks better, and this also applies to a lot of older games moving forward. Right now though, some games like Red Dead Redemption 2 for example, haven't been updated yet to allow it to run in higher resolutions like 4K. Many games are being updated though, like every single day, and in fact, by the time you're watching this, Red Dead Redemption might have already gotten the update that lets it run in 4K, who knows. But all this stuff isn't a PS5's fault though, it's a very powerful machine. What's also cool as well, is that even with all this power, the fans in the PS5 aren't really loud. They actually aren't loud at all. It's not like the PS4 where you know if it's even just turned on. Like the ps 4 fans will be so loud, like going full throttle, and you think it's playing like, like Crisis and like 8K, 240 frames per second, and then, and then you go check what's actually playing, and you see that it's on Spotify with one game running in the background. <sighs> well, with the PS5, things are completely different. You can be playing Call of Duty Cold War and rotating between all these other games I've been showing you in this video, like this game, and this one, and this one, and this one, and you barely even hear the fans turn on. Like seriously, I couldn't. But even when you do hear the fans turn on, like I did eventually, you see or you hear that it doesn't even get loud at all. Like, not even close to how loud the PS4s get. Basically, all in all, just know that everything hardware-wise with the PS5 is just top-notch. Like, I mean, I know we're gonna get tired of it and move on to the next console in the next couple of years and everything, but right now, the hardware of the PS5 feels and is very, very next-gen. You wanna see just how next-gen it is, though? Like, you wanna see what some might say is even more next-gen compared to the power and graphical performance? Well then, let's take a look at this guy. This is the new DualSense 5, aka the new PS5 controller. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty new with the all-white design and a couple dimensions changed here and there, but it still easily looks and feels like a PlayStation controller. Nothing's really changed there exactly. And overall, it has what any good controller should. The curve's so nice in your hand, it's even more ergonomic to hold when compared to the DualShock 4, the PS4 controller. And like before, every single button feels good to push. Like it doesn't feel too soft or too mushy or anything. Basically, it feels like a good controller. But it doesn't just stop there though. I'm sure you already know, but it also has some new features baked into it that makes it feel not just like a good controller, but makes it feel like a next-gen controller, both in coolness and in practicality. You know, a controller is just supposed to take in information like when you push a button on the controller, it's just supposed to input it into the console and then do a certain thing, like do a certain thing in the game or whatever, right? The thing with the DualSense controller is that it can take in a bunch more information than we used to out of the box, and it can take that information in a bunch of cool ways, if that makes any sense. And even on top of that, the controller by itself has a whole lot of extra features that we're not used to seeing. You know what? I'm talking too much. Let me just show you, okay? First, the vibrator motors have gotten a big upgrade. They can do a whole bunch of different stuff now. You probably already know, but you literally will get a different vibration from when you're walking on sand, and a different vibration for ice, and a different vibration for metal, and it also coincides with the sound that the speaker and the controller will play as well. Okay, next is the triggers. So the triggers basically have more life to them. Like, they're now part of the immersive gaming experience as well. 
basically they now have resistance built into them so a pull on the trigger isn't the same as a pull on the trigger you know games can now implement cool stuff to where you have to use actual force to beat certain levels and do certain things games like call of duty cold war for example in cold war pulling the triggers in your controller is intertwined with pulling the trigger and actually shooting with every single gun like the actual gun like you're gonna feel some resistance under your finger and you're gonna have to like use a little more force to push past the resistance and then your gun is gonna start firing and as your gun starts firing you can just feel the vibration of the improved motors in the controller in your hands and actually not just in your hands but like on your actual finger like the single finger you're using to pull the trigger just like the xbox one with the trigger vibration the ps5 now has this feature so it will vibrate right underneath your finger and the vibration feels very good too and that mixed in with the vibration from the entire controller when doing certain things with the speakers and everything just makes for a more immersive experience now the way call of duty does this though is just one way to implement this feature other games would do it differently and you might not even like it sometimes like it actually got me killed a couple of times when i was trying to shoot someone and there was just resistance in the way that i wasn't used to i just died before i pushed past it and also some games like spider-man for example they don't even use the feature at all like they do nothing with the triggers and nothing new with the upgraded vibrator motors and the speakers just play the sound of different surfaces you walk on just remember the feature is there but it really is up to the developers to make use of it i bet a lot of them will though moving forward especially the exclusive games coming right but we'll talk about games later okay now let's talk about the speakers and the microphones they just seem to be a lot more involved with the whole gaming experience now basically like i told you how you basically be feeling the metal underneath your feet with the help of the vibrator motors in your hands right well the speakers will also be making the sound of your foot hitting the ground it's just pretty cool in other games like call of duty you can actually hear people in the same game session as you talk to you through the speakers and since you actually have a microphone on the controller itself, you can talk back if you want. That's already very, very cool in itself. But the microphone can also be used in cooler ways. Like the Astros game, for example, it asks you to blow air into the controller, and then the controller makes it sound like little Sony minions in the controller can feel the breeze, and then they're making noises. And the controller even does a breeze vibration in your hands, and it's like a distinct vibration too. Like, it's just pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know, if you don't want people to hear you, by the way, and you don't want the microphones to be listening, you can just press the button on the controller to mute your mic. But what's very, very cool about the mic system with this is that you never have to look for another external mic or anything again. Like, you always have one. It's just very cool to no longer have to worry about that anymore, as long as you have your controller with you. But about the microphones, though, how good does it actually sound? Does the microphone actually capture good quality audio? Well, listen for yourself. So this is basically how the microphone sound like on the DualSense controllers. How does it sound to you? Is it pretty clear? It's pretty close to my mouth right now. Now the microphone isn't close to my mouth at all. This is like normal distance and my chair is squeaking. Hey, How does it sound to you? Where's your Kumar? So I have, you don't know, know that guy. Pop the Kumar. So as you can see, they don't sound too bad at all actually. Even when they're not like very close to your mouth and everything. They still sound pretty good, like better than a lot of other microphones I've heard people use to talk to me. It's no high quality voiceover microphone though, not at all. Now as far as how long the controller will last battery wise, that'll be around 4-6 to six hours of constant use, you know. That's not too bad, but it's not really impressive at all in my opinion. But all in all, the new DualSense PS5 controller is a very good controller based on what we expect from a standard good controller, but it also goes beyond that because it has a bunch of cool extra features as well that really do just up the immersiveness and just the enjoyment of games in general. But that's when the game developers actually implement them though, so we gotta keep that in mind. Now speaking of, let's talk about arguably the most important part of the gaming experience, the actual games themselves. <laughs> What games can you play when you get the PS5? Well first, almost all your PS4 games. Like, there's a very, very small amount that's incompatible, but that probably won't affect you much. You can play almost all PS4 games on the PS5. Now second, you can also play the multi-platform games of course, like FIFA, Call of Duty, you know, just games like that. And then third, there's the exclusive PlayStation games, both the ones that are available now, like God of War, Spider-Man, etc. And also the ones coming in the future as well, that will be tailor-made for the PS5. Now, if you're worried about the immediate future, like 2021, then don't worry, I got you. These are all the confirmed games coming out for the PS5 in 2021. Credit to Inverse.com for putting the list together. Okay, we have The Pedestrian coming out this month in January. There's The Neo Collection coming out in early February. There's also Destruction, All Stars coming out in February as well. For March, we have Returnal coming out. We also have Kina, Bridge Spirits, that's supposed to come out, not exactly in March, but in the first quarter of the year. We have Deathloop and should come out at the end of May. We have Ratchet and Clank, a real fan favorite. Now it should be coming out in the first half of the year. 
And now another game people are really excited for is Horizon Forbidden West, and it's coming out in the second half of the year. Now another other game that people are really excited for is Gran Turismo 7. It should come out at some point in 2021. We don't know any more specific date yet. And then the other games coming out this year are Ghostwire Tokyo, Goodbye Volcano High, Solar Ash, Jet the Far Shore, and last but not least, God of War Ragnarok. So as you can see, there are a bunch of good games to look forward to for the PS5, even in 2021. But those aren't all the games you can play on the PS5 though, because the last set of games you can play on the PS5 are the games from the past. And you do this by getting a PlayStation Now subscription, which costs about $10 per month. They have some old classic games in the library, but they also have a lot of games I wouldn't touch as well. Basically though, when it comes to games, the PS5 really isn't lacking. It doesn't have so much next-gen, next-gen games with great graphics that take advantage of all the capabilities and everything right now, but it's only going to get better as more games come out. And you know, when you buy a console, you basically commit to all the games it's going to get in the future. So that means you can also expect some classic exclusive PlayStation games down the line. Games like The Last of Us, or even Uncharted, you know, if they make another one, you know, games like that. And that's a pretty good lineup, I'd say. So yeah, basically, there isn't much you'd be lacking when it comes to playing games on the PS5. Now, what's also pretty good is the software of the system itself. I'm talking the overall speed of just navigating the UI, and just the UI itself. PS5s don't use hard drives anymore, they use SSDs, and that, mixed with the power it already has, just makes it like a very fast device, like I'm sure you already know. The PS5 just feels very fast and snappy. Games launch very, very quickly, like with that next gen speed, and the interface is just very smooth to navigate. It is something you're gonna have to get used to though from the PS4, because things are different now. But it's nothing I'll really complain about. Now what I would complain about, and actually what I would say is the only thing I really don't like about the PS5, at least right now, is the storage situation. I thought it was going to have like one terabyte, but then you look at the box and it actually says it has about 800 gigabytes, and you accept that because you've heard about it and everything, that's cool. But then you go to the settings on the PS5, and then you see you only have access to 667 gigabytes. That's already annoying. But you know, I already heard about that from the internet, you know, I've already accepted that. I've already moved on, right? But then there's this other problem with the PS5 that I've noticed. It has to do with this other compartment here when it comes to storage. It just doesn't make any sense, like whatever data is here just grows and grows and grows and grows. You can't delete it or access any files there. The PS5 will just give you a prompt that says like these are the files your console needs. But that's definitely not true. You could try and try deleting even everything in your console, but you could still have like over 100 gigabytes of space that you can't use just stuck in the other compartment. It doesn't make any sense. Nothing I tried worked until I just reset the entire system, and then I got all the space back. But still, other people have reported this problem as well, and it's just annoying, you know? A positive thing about storage though is that you can install your PS4 games on an external hard drive, so that's pretty cool. But you can't do this with PS5 games though. And also, you will be able to open up your PS5 and upgrade your internal SSD drive in the future, but you can't do that right now, you know? But Sony does say they're working on it, and we should expect it in the future, so that's good. But you know what's not so good? And what I would say is just about the absolute worst thing about the PS5 and what I hate the most about it is the fact that it's so hard to actually get your hands on one. Now, I personally have been trying to get my hands on one since it came out all the way in November. Right now as I'm shooting this, is January 2021, and I still don't have a PS5 for myself. My friend was able to get one though, and he actually lent it to me, and that's how I was able to make this video. Thanks again, Caesar. But still, like, that's really annoying. That's the worst part of this whole thing. I remember one time I was in class and we were giving our finals presentations and it was almost my group's turn to present, but I got a notification on my phone that it was a restock, right? And I wasn't really trying to miss out on getting the PS5 anymore. And this time I clicked it immediately. Like the notification came like 12.09 and I clicked it like 12.08. And as I clicked it immediately, I was too late. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know, I don't understand. For a long time, the only way you could actually get a PS5 is if you bought it for like a thousand plus dollars from like a scalper or someone that's trying to resell it, right? And that's pretty annoying. I wasn't trying to do any of that. But things are getting back to normal now. And PS5s are getting more and more in stock. I remember like I saw the, uh, the PS5 actually stayed in stock for like 15 minutes, which is a pretty big deal. Remember, I told you I couldn't get it like when I clicked on it immediately. So that's a pretty big deal. By the time you're watching this video, actually, this is probably not be a problem anymore. And if it is, just wait till tomorrow. And if it's still a problem then, then just wait till tomorrow. Again, just trust me, I'm gonna be right eventually, okay? But anyways, guys, that's about it. That's about everything you need to know about the PlayStation 5. At least I think so, okay? Let me know in the comment section below if there's something I didn't talk about that you wanted me to talk about, or if you have any questions, or just thoughts, or comments, or whatever. Let me know all of that in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more, 
and thank you for watching. further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now.